So let's uh, scroll back to the top of this uh, handout, uh, back to the master boot record uh, data structure. And you can see that uh, here at uh, offset uh, 446, starting from this offset in MBR, um, and uh, if we select uh, 64 bytes, uh, this is the partition table. So right here, if I go to offset uh, 446, I'll just uh, jump to it uh, to show you how to select it manually. So right down here, I can see my uh, cursor position. Um, and if I make a selection of uh, uh, 64 bytes, okay, so right here, okay, uh, pretty much all the way down to the um, uh, the sector signature. So this is uh, 64 bytes. It's called the partition table, the master boot record uh, partition table, and it allows up to four entries of information uh, right here, or, uh, these uh, four uh, entries, um, which um, uh, allow up to four primary partitions. So we call these partitions that can be specified um, uh, primary partitions. So the meaning of this is that as we have our disk structure like this, right? So this is, or rather, uh, yeah, uh, this is the entire disk structure. We know that we have a couple of partitions here. Suppose that this partition was not deleted. So the master uh, boot record at the beginning of the drive contains this par uh, partition table, and uh, it can have uh, basically four entries, right? So it can have these four entries. And here we have a couple of partitions, so I'll just place them somewhere on this drive arbitrarily like this. And uh, so these partition uh, partition table uh, entries, which is the next uh, structure uh, shown right here, uh, specify uh, where's the logical uh, address, uh, the basically the first uh, uh, sector of the partition, and what its size and sectors. So it specifies this. Uh, uh, size and sectors. And so this information, of course, is coming from uh, from one of these uh, entries uh, uh, in our master uh, master boot record uh, partition table. And the second uh, description, likewise, is coming from the second one. So uh, just to redraw this, uh, let's just do it uh, like this. So this is, again, my uh, master boot record with four partition entries and there are two of these partitions um, and uh, so the first uh, entry potentially describes the beginning location and uh, then also describes what is the size of this and then the second entry here could be uh, describing the position uh, of the second partition and then um, its length as well. And of course, partitions themselves host the actual file system. So each partition can have its own file system. Uh, in addition to this, when we have partitions, uh, right here, when we have these partitions, uh, what is also possible to have this master boot record, and then somewhere we have a partition, and this partition at the, uh, at, at the beginning, uh, right here, may um, have another structure that looks like this. Basically, uh, the same uh, type of uh, um, uh, partition table. And it may be describing other, um, other partitions, which we call secondary partitions. So elsewhere, we can have these uh, basically secondary partitions which will be located somewhere here. So we can, again, we can have up to four of them. Like this. And uh, so basically we can have, um, and uh, those uh, partitions here, here, and here are called secondary partitions. And the reason, uh, the, the real reason they're called secondary partitions, because they cannot uh, contain a bootable operating system. Only primary partitions can have a bootable uh, operating system. And of course, 
uh, also here we have a bootable flag which is right at the beginning of the uh, partition entry which specifies whether this partition is bootable and of course our bias on the computer can be configured to automatically boot from the first bootable partition and this is where the uh, basically the um, uh, the BIOS will, will load this first sector of information into computer memory and pass control to the first instruction that can be found in this bootable code, which can further load more information from uh, here and into memory and continue execution and so forth and so forth and so forth. Finally, the file system becomes available and we are going to start loading additional components of the operating system into memory and the booting sequence continues and we're uh, booting the operating system. So just wanted to give you a quick um, high level view of the purpose of a bastard boot record um, and uh, what it may potentially specify so uh, pretty much specifying the geometry of the disk